like a good moment to talk? See? It squealed! <laughs> Hit it again! Keep your hands steady, three. <laughs> Make it squeal again. We're juicing it up. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wargs. And it makes funny noises. We made it squeal. Look, look, you'll see. Give me that rock. I'll show you. Again. This is my time. Finding my way. Try something else.
coming through. the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. It is you who should be praised, brother. You are Sylvanus's instrument. And please, just Helsen. I will not demand honorifics of my savior. Parasites in your head? You mean you have one of them? Father, preserve you, child. You're infected, aren't you? The Mind Flayer's spawn. But... something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the Absolute like the true souls do. How is this possible? Perhaps. But I wouldn't want to place all my faith in blind luck. You weren't speaking lightly when you said you needed help. Let me tell you what I know. I've been studying these parasites for a while now. Ever since I discovered these so-called true souls are infected with them, someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say, I can't undo that magic, which means I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. I didn't find what I came here for, a way to remove the tadpoles. But I found the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That must be where these enchantments are placed on them. 
And it's where you'll find your cure. I overheard that the cultists are sending all of their captives to Moonrise Towers. Innocents go in, true souls come out. Given that all of these true souls are infected, it has to be the source for this magic. If you want to find a cure, you must head there and discover how the tadpoles are being manipulated. I wish I could, but there's still work I've yet to finish. Blood I've yet to spill. I've no right to ask more of you, but if you could help me, I'd be free to join your journey to Moonrise. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the Drow Minthara, the Hobgoblin Draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. Be warned. My presence could make things more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. Get on with it. Assume nothing. The pride of the gate.
things have stayed interesting. What's next, I wonder? I've got a long road ahead. forward. legs protrude from the hole. A failed escape, it seems. You notice the corpse is very dead, but that's all. The body comes loose, revealing a tunnel you can escape where he failed. Here's somebody special. The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. A priestess? One of the leaders, no doubt about it. Let's make her squeal. What's that? Tell your friend to keep quiet, 
or he'll lose his good eye. Ready for the fire, are ya? Shows our devotion to the absolute. These maggots see how strong we are with her guidance. Whole camp will be branded soon, and you should be too. You ready? Brace yourself, this'll sting. Maybe you don't need it. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. She probes your mind, tangling your thoughts with hers. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Darkness seems to swallow the temple, leaving you with a vision of the goblin priestess receiving instruction from a handsome young man, one of the chosen. The vision dissolves away. You stand before the goblin priestess in the temple once again. Her faith floods into you, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania, secure, hidden. I feel you in there, digging around. Works both ways. And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. With the Absolute's will, I can fix anything. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Oi! Priestess! Like us. We want them all! Why do they think they're yeah. talking to a god? I wait good enough for the Absolute. Perhaps that's how we would have ended up had our Nautiloid not been attacked. Ready to clear your head? Whatever the Absolute tells me to. Don't worry, she loves you. I can tell. Don't want a crowd of gawpers. Everybody else needs to leave. hasn't gone unnoticed. It's about to be returned in kind.
was an illicit parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. to stay idle. Action, not reaction. No one back home will ever believe this. up for discussion. You! Not supposed to be here! Leave! You've wandered into a forbidden area. You sense it might be time to leave. A brief respite.
Obi-Wan, you're dead. You dumb knuckle. Not dead anywhere. Let's hope this gives us some answers. Silence. You'll interrupt the ritual. Sugon al Shukok, o Taisho Kek I command you, corpse. Speak. Reveal truth to the absolute. Blackest blade, a geich. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Suga no Sukuk. This is the big boss. Strike him down. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. If it isn't another true soul. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. This Mind Flayer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Yet it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks is the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the Goblin camp. Her mind focuses. Their suspicion cannot be aroused. They cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. Your skull sizzles with Ragslin's displeasure. His mouth is still, but you hear his demand. 
I speak for the Absolute, and I say, you stay. I've got plans for you, boy. And there's no true soul yet who turned their back on the Absolute. You choke on black smoke as the hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth. Lucan Ock and Koldek Shulkokhek! The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart ceases. What if the creature noted your presence at the crash site? Raxlin's mind reels, then calms. He will speak as you command. With Raxlin's voice, you ask. Who killed you? Raxlin remains composed. If he senses your manipulations, he gives no sign. The creature responds, not in words, but memories. You see a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. Damn it! That tells me nothing! Raxlin remains ignorant to your presence in his mind, Merc. You choose your next question. Who is the Absolute? Raxlin frowns in confusion at a question he would never have asked. You see an image. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, gnarl teeth dripping blood. You see other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. You're kidding me. Very helpful, Squid. Suspicion floods Raxlin's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. What were you doing in Faerun? Curiosity conquers his suspicions. You suck in a breath of relief, and visions consume you once more. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high, control panels melting, flesh pods spilled open. The corpse collapses, silent once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it! And nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat! No answers, no killer, and no damned weapon! <sighs> the damned trow was right! Can't let her get all of that glory. Like I said, I got plans for you. Report to the trow. Minsar is the name. She's mounting an attack on that blasted grove. Tell her you'll join her. Say that again. Cause I know I didn't just hear you refuse the Absolute! Falling in line. Just what I like to see. No prizes for guessing what this weapon thereafter really is. The artifact. If that's the case, We've got more problems than just the worms in our heads. With the dead. Rivers and streams will flow with their blood. This. You'll sit at her table. You'll drink from her 
Salute's name, boys!
On the move. The blade will not bend. Another fight. Be useful. I have a lot on my mind and, well, in it. What's in 
inside. More for me. I wonder what the next move is. The pride of the gate. Oh, enough waiting. I crave blood. Still breathing, despite everything. have seen everything. Maybe I need more pockets. Thank you. 
else fire. She's coming. Well, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. Well, you absolute stinker. You kept me a secret. Hmm. Time to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora, and at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria, pet. Trust me on this. Oh, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine. On you. Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta ta. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. That, that can't be. You're mad! But, tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers. Unless... 
That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. I can't attest to the specifics, but I do know that not long after insertion, the host, that's you, turns into a mind flayer. As there's not a tentacle on your head, I can only assume you haven't been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet gods! If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Private word would be nice. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not. not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. I'll say what I can, but it won't be enough. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast Eldritch Blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call Hell Beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. It's not unrelated. I wish I could tell you more. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this. The moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. I'll be honest, soldier. I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. <sighs> Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. <sighs> you can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was.
have to keep going. This setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. Not yet, I'm afraid. But my expectations are very, very high. The Blade of Frontiers in the guise of a devil. I'd remark on the irony, but I'd hate to waste the breath. Still, it took guts to defy that petty patron of his. The blade's sting is real. I have a confession. I was too hasty to judge you. I thought you witless, gutless, unimpressively bland. Now, well... You've earned my respect and more still. You've proven your wits. You are efficient and dominant, in and out of battle. You've proven your courage. I swear, you would tear the horns off one dragon to plunge into another. And you're hardly bland. Your scent alone is enough to make my neck sweat and my hair stand on end. If you must know, Vlekith requires everything of her children. I can't count how many bruises I've inflicted. Can't measure how much blood I've drawn in the Undying Queen's name. I know only blood red and death black. My mind is silver and my body steel. I am what I must be, say what I must be, to survive every beast I face and every wound I bear. Bah, enough talk. I will be plain. I want to taste you. Perhaps tonight, perhaps later. But I want it all the same. Do you? Yes. Perhaps one night soon, I will come to your bunk and take what is mine. Until that night comes, I shall keep enjoying your scent. Help feeling Will got off lightly. The wrath of the Hells is second only to the wrath of the Heavens. Having a devil in our camp will certainly make things interesting. Never a dull day, is there? We all have our burdens, one way or the other. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? Perhaps I'm not conveying the urgency of the situation. It's incredibly, world-shatteringly important you give me a suitable artifact. Please. Well, there.
there was an invitation to leave if I ever heard one. Good luck in your endeavors. You shall certainly need it. the right thing, and it earned him a set of horns. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to us all. Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers, if we can convince the right people to talk. Obviously, I would, but you have so many followers already. I wouldn't want to crowd you. In that case, I'd be happy to tag along. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Fathers, the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the flaming fist, brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and a talent for courtly dance. <clears throat> it's been a badger's age since I've twinkled my toes. A drunk ogre could put on a better show. Tempting. Uh, give it some time. Develop a bond, and maybe I'll show you a move or two. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck. Not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? <laughs> it's because you know the heart lurking under the horns. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe, and one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. I think that unknowable powers come with unknowable consequences. I can't say I'm not curious, but once you take an elithid by the talon, there's no telling how deep into the abyss it might drag you. I appreciate where you're coming from. Truly, I do. But these parasites are quite literally elithid weapons of war. And I'm not so certain they won't be turned against us upon consuming them. May the darkness protect you. 
quite the understatement, but yes, I have it. And I'll guard it with my life. I was part of a group sent by my cloister. We were to take the artifact from the Githyanki and bring it to Baldur's Gate, no matter the cost. Though it turned out the cost was very steep. I was the only one of the group to survive. I took the artifact and fled, only to be ensnared by mind flayers before I could finish the mission. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. I told you already. I surrendered my memories for the sake of the mission. Shah's secrets must be protected. Duty demands it. Once I fulfill my mission, I can have my memories restored. How cynical. I should borrow that line sometime. But if I have to die, so be it. Like I said, faith. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. I'll try my best. But secrecy is ingrained in me. Lady Shah considers it greater protection than any shield or armor. I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. It's less difficult than you might imagine, when you can't remember life without it. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Shah. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. It's difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. On one hand, they seem useful. But on the other hand, or perhaps tentacle before long, we know where they're coming from and what lies at the end of that path. I never expected Ceramorphosis to be tempting. I think we should resist these powers. There's simply too many unknowns for us to risk it. Well, perhaps you have a point. Fine. Let's explore these powers then. I just hope we don't come to regret it. Here goes nothing. Mark my words, this power would be no blessing but a curse. 
You might as well ask me to gouge out my eyes for the promise of sight, or slice off my tongue for the promise of taste. Consume all the gate tadpoles you wish. I'm not so craven. And when the tadpole has stretched to every pore and slithered through every vein, what then? It won't hear my screams. It won't care if I beg. I will be remade in its image. My faith in Vlakith will guide me, and my own might will sustain me. I have no need of this depraved power. Oh, don't mind if I do. What's the story? You... did? Wow. That was sound of you. Why'd you do it? Glad to be counted among them. Really glad. Wish I could have been there to watch those ignots crumble. But I'm just happy they're off my tail. Then again, facing them down might have put my tin can into overdrive. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. High pain tolerance and a dynamic duo of truly shitty bosses. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. A weaponsmith, huh? Not sure if he's the guy, but I'd love to find out. A tune-up would do this rusty heart a world of good. Why are we slowing down? The year, ten air. The place, a sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero, Karlak, a knock-kneed delinquent from the outer city with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. Worked for a guy I respected. A lot. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. Well, to war. I learned quick how to stay alive. And the engine served me when it came to killing devils. Ten years of that. The stories I could tell. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. There are many answers to that question. None are important. Correct. No. Be 
Beyond mortal realms, there doth exist an amalgamation of spirits akin to thine own, ensnared by the treacherous cult of the Absolute, felled in its name. They bear great discontentment with their destiny. For a mere pittance of coin, I might summon the worthiest among them to lend aid to thy undertaking. Most willingly, forsooth. Their passions doth run deep for what hath been wrought upon them. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. My services are all that I can proffer thee. What thou wilt do with them is for thee to undertake. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Because it is my calling, there is little else to explain. A matter of coin. Then I shall wait here patiently until it is acquired. Such is life. Outrage leading to a singular end. As thou desire.